And maybe your first thought might be like, oh yeah, but we, we sort of did something like that with normals where we sort of pointed normals inwards with this. Uh, well, I guess you sort of could, but the problem is if you did that, uh, then they would always point inside. So even if the tentacles were to like sort of move, then it would just slide along the surface to keep rotated inside. So that's probably not that ideal. We kind of want it to be just pushed inside, but based on the animation of the curve. So now we're going to get a little bit into some mathematics. So there's something called a cross product. And a cross product needs two vectors. And then it will give a a perpendicular vector to both of those. So let's let's have a look at what that is. So let's just first do it on the, just a simple add node and just create some stuff and then you can sort of see what's going on. So let's create a point here. Let's create some vectors on it in a wrangle. We're going to do a wrangle because it's just faster. So tap C to type V at N. And then if we if you type equals and then with these type of uh, brackets, let's put this in the x direction. So then we're gonna get a normal pointing into the x direction. Now let's create a second vector called fiat up and then put it between these brackets again and let's make that one point in the y direction. And if you then go to the information menu and you press up, you can see it creates a visualizer because Houdini recognizes up, so it knows how to create a visualizer for our vector like this. And if we press D in the viewport, go to visualize, you can see it appeared here. We can double click on the, on the uh, pencil and then maybe change the visualization to be a little bit smaller. Right, so something like that. So now we have two vectors. Now let's create a cross product. So a cross product will create something perpendicular to these, to these vectors. So, Let's give it a name, type V at cross, and then type cross product, and then do a cross product between V at N and V at up. So now we carry, create that, and then we want, let's create a visualizer for this. We need to create this one ourselves because cross is not recognized by default, just so, just a name we made up. So go to viewport, press D, press the plus icon, go to marker, vector trail, Type cross, maybe give it a color, maybe red. And then we get another vector. So that's quite interesting. Maybe on the add by itself, not so much, but let's say if we do it on a big. And let's put down a facet. Let's put post compute normals. So we have some normals. Let's go in the wrangle. Let's remove our normal here because we already have a normal. And have a look. And let's hide the visualizer for our up vector. Right. So now you can see we get a. Uh, we get something, it's like, yeah, maybe if we do another angle, it might look a little bit more interesting. Let's try it like this. So you can kind of see what's going on, right? If I, I probably, if I do it on the Z, it's gonna give me the most interesting result. Let me have a look. Right, so now you can see we get sort of a cross product, which is like flowing along, like around, around the surface. What we could also do is we could now do a cross product on top of our cross product. So, so cross product sad perception. So let's type this vector cross. So if you type vector here again, it's just losing it inside of here. And then maybe V at cross. And then let's do a uh, cross product between our normal again and our cross. And now we get stuff flowing along our surface. So, and then the vector here will depend on 
which way it will flow it will flow so now it's flowing upwards now it's flowing downwards so it's a little bit like fur or something so again we can use these vectors to solve our little problem here so let's do that all right so let's go over here and let's have a look so we have normals here let's make it read wrangle so what do we need? Okay, we need another vector. Okay, let's type vector up equals, and then let's put it in the up direction maybe. All right, now let's do a cross button. Vector cross equals cross product of at normal and up. We can write this out if we want. Okay. Okay, this is looking a little bit weird. What did I do? Uh, one second, so this does have a normal. Oh, of course, I forgot to type cross here. All right, <laughs> stupid me. All right, so now you can see I get a cross product pointing that direction. So still not exactly what we want. But what we can do is now maybe type V at cross, like we did before, equals the cross product between cross, and so between, sorry, at the normal and the cross product we already had. So now we have something that we want. You can see I have vectors pointing out. So maybe I want to invert this. So times minus one. So now they're pointing all inwards. And let's normalize it maybe. So again, always with these brackets, just order of operations. And you can see it sort of changed here. Um, so now they're all normalized. Right. So now we have created these vectors that we can use for a copy. So right now this is not really doing much, but what we can say, so let's highlight our copies already. Let's make them, uh, make them packed. Let's maybe visualize our thing here. All right, so we can sort of see what's, what's gonna happen. All right, so we can see now we have these, these vectors pointing inwards. Now what we can say is, okay, let's say that the position of the points, so maybe time V at P to be a little bit clear, equals, so, pl sorry, plus equals. So that would mean we will add two, and then we will add uh, the, uh, so we have the cross vector here, and we, we can, by the way, just use it here. We don't need to write it out. We just use it for the visualization. So just type uh, vector, so uh, sorry, so just cross equals, so now it will be like that, and then plus equals cross, right, so now everything is going completely in the wrong direction, and I think I didn't even need to, need to invert, by the way, so let's remove the inversion, right, but it's way too much, so let's do it with the, uh, if we let's make a slider, type float, and then call it uh, I guess offset equals and type chf offset, and then cross times offset plus, and then create a plus icon. Right, so now we have a slider that's gonna allow them to move inwards, which is. I mean, they're, they are moving in the right direction, so we're almost there. Like we can see if we if we sort of move, you can see there's, they're moving nicely with the with the thing. Okay. Oh. Okay, so one more thing that we need to do is we need to int take into account the thickness of these things. And remember, we have that we have a p scale 
So the P scale is the thickness because we use the thickness to drive this. So what we can say maybe instead is cross times at P scale. So that already works, but maybe we want to include our, our, uh, our slider so we have some more control. So P scale times offset. So now we can increase it and it will also take into account the thickness. So you see our copies are still sort of oriented a little bit weirdly. So maybe what we want to do is first off, kind of we maybe want to orient them in, in the same direction as well. So I guess at n equals cross, right? And then we need to sort of transform our original thing to sort of match our orientation. Something like that. Let's offset our thing a little bit more. And let's play. Yeah, this is looking good. All right, so now one more thing that we want to do is we want to also change the scale of these things along the curves. So, I mean, we already have the... Uh, we already have a P scale. We just want to be able to maybe influence the uh, scale. So we're, we're using the P scale in here. So maybe after that, we want to tell the P scale to maybe be smaller. So at P scale times equals, and then channel float P scale. So then we have a multiplier for our P scale and then this needs to happen afterwards because else the offset will also be influenced. So now let's have a look. Now we have our little knobs facing inwards. So I know this was probably a little bit complicated, but that's fine. Um, so this is just cross product, which is a uh, something you use quite a lot, and you can use it well to do a lot of cool stuff, like including something like this. So you can use cross product to sort of get new angles uh, from from uh, like so. If you have a vector, you can use it to get other vectors as well. So you can use that for orientations and to do a whole bunch of other more complicated stuff. But yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully you could sort of get along with it. And if you did, if you didn't, well, this is something you're gonna run into uh, a lot more later as well. So, I mean, you can always get back to this video and sort of have a have a have a look at what it's uh, what is happening. So maybe if we want to do the same inside of VOPs because Vex is maybe a little bit complicated. Let's disable this thing. Let's do an attribute VOP. Let's go inside. Let's maybe get a second view. Because this is something I personally find just easier to do in a uh, in, in a in a wrangle. But let's do it inside of VOPs as well. So let's just keep our wrangle over here so we can sort of see what we did. And let's rebuild this as a wrangle. So the other way around than we did before. All right. So let's call, make a parameter. Again, that's like this. So this one. So it would be a parameter called up, for example. The effector will be a vector. Okay. Let's also give it a label for up. Okay. Now another one, another parameter, cross. Uh, oh, sorry. I don't even need that. Sorry. Okay. So I need to get a cross product between my normal. So in the first input, so that's what we did here. We plug this in and then up, up vector, second input. So now, now we did this thing. 
So that was this part. So now we want to do another cross product between our normal, that's this one, and our other cross product. So like this. And then we want to normalize it. Let's make this a little bit bigger. So now we did this part. So effect, create an effector, create a cross product, uh, cross product between our normal and our effector. Then to do, do our cross product between our cross product and our normal. And now we want to do some stuff. So we want to add this to our position. So take position, add this to our position. We do here. So VIP plus equals cross. But we don't want to add the cross like that. We want to influence it by the p-scale. So by the p-scale. And a other multiple. So another thing. So we want to add a multiplier in between. So we want to multiply, be able to multiply our p-scale. So call this uh, offset. Right, so then we did this part, and then we want to so then we want to multiply this thing by the thing we did over here, like that, and this thing needs to be bind exported into the normal. Well, by the way, we can just plug this into the normal, like that, and this thing needs to be go into the position. All right, so let's go up a level and let's see if this actually work. Let's go into the merge. All right, so we should have some stuff here. All right, so you can see we get exactly the same thing. So we disable this, enable this, same thing. So cross offset triangle offset flop. So again, you can use whatever you want. I just find in this case, this easier than this entire network, but they are doing the same. So let's just have a look at them individually. So creating an up factor is this thing, doing a cross product between the normal and the up factor is this thing, doing a cross product between the cross product and the normal is this thing, normalizing it is this thing, binding the p-scale, multiplying it by a slider is this thing, then multiplying this entire thing by that value is being is happening here. Then adding it to the position with this, and then exporting our normalized cross product of our cross product, our cross, pro cross product exception basically goes into here. So I hope this makes sense. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. This is tricky stuff, but it is very important stuff. So, and again, this is all stuff you're also going to be using later when you're going to start doing simulations and stuff. So. Uh, and this was by far the hardest, probably most technical part of this tutorial. So you've already, uh, well, you've already gone across that. From here, it will only be easier. So, uh, hooray. So, uh, yeah, let's move on with the, uh, with the rest.